Okay, so this is a tutorial video for how to do an extendable dodecahedron. And the reason I call it extendable is because with most of the dodecahedron frames I've seen, uh, the vertices of the polyhedron, you can't add things onto the end of them, like you can with icosahedron frames, cube frames, uh, other kinds of frames. It just doesn't seem to work with most dodecahedron frames, but this one you can do it with. And it's an important shape in a lot of the uh, most recent things I've built. So, what you need here are 30 of these pieces, which are just long straight pieces, pretty standard, I use them a lot. Uh, these are made of rings of 10 magnets, uh, too tall, and you just squish them together, and you have those, and like I said, there's 30 of those. Then you also need 20 of these pieces, which will form the corners. And this is what they look like. If I bring it too close to the camera, it goes out of focus. But that's what it looks like. And I'm going to show you how to make these. Um, made all but one of them. So you need two uh, six magnet rings. And then you need 12 magnets. What you do is you wrap around like that and fill in that little hole until you have something like this. Then you take these rings and you stack them to where they fit like that. You don't want them you don't want them fitting like that. You want them fitting like this. And you bend it back. And this is a little bit tricky until it looks like that. Then you do the other one, same way on the opposite side. And that's a corner piece. Now if you tried to build this, you may have noticed already that this is really fragile. Um, so be careful with those. Um, and so now the next thing you're going to want to do is take one of these long pieces and get like a container or something. That helps for me anyway. And it has, you can see, the magnet that's on the point. It's just one lonely magnet out there on the end. And what you want to do is peel that off. Drop that in the cup, we don't need that. So the end looks like this. Now this is really unstable. So that's why I leave those point magnets on until right before I have to take them off. Because otherwise it would just all collapse into a messy, jum like jumbled up pile. So you take this, and you notice you're not bringing it towards this end, you're bringing it towards this end. And I have the polarity backwards. So you want to do it, and it will just pop in like that. And that's what the underside looks like. And what you want to do to the underside is take these two magnets here and, and push them back just a little bit farther until they click in with that hexagon ring. Now. You can see there's places for two more to attach, so you're going to want to go ahead and do that. And one thing you may notice is that these corners are very fragile, but they're even more fragile when you start putting these on until you put all three on. So while there's only one or two edges that are attached to a corner, that is... Uh, you want to be very careful until you get that last third one on and then for some reason it becomes actually surprisingly pretty stable once that third one is on. So then you just continue attaching edges to corners uh, until you have kind of two halves of a dodecahedron.
Okay, and so now you have those two halves, and you've only used half of these so far, but you've used most of these, and these two are perfectly identical. So, you can set one aside and work with only one of these. This is how I like to do it. There are probably other ways to do this, but this seems to be the one with least likelihood of breaking stuff. So, go ahead and add five more onto each of these. And you want to take the last five and add two each. And add these on to each of the gaps. Okay, so now you're at this point, and all you need to do is take these five off and put the top on. And there it is. It is the extendable dodecahedron. And if you want to make it larger or smaller, what you can do is use edge pieces that are longer. I mean, that's pretty straightforward. And there you go.